All right, what's going on, guys? Jeff here. Today is Friday, and by the way, I'm supposed to be talking about my trades today, uh, which I'll also be talking a little bit about my trades. But most of, uh, most of the time today, uh, I'll be actually talking about the earning report, the all the earnings that actually came out yesterday. So uh, just to give you guys a brief rundown of the earning report that uh, was out yesterday, we got Amazon, we got Snapchat, we got Ford, we got Activision, we got Pinterest, we got Unity, we got Build.com, we got GoPro, we got Esther Lauder, um, and then, yeah, that's about it. Yeah, so we got nine earnings to go through. Um, I will not be going through all of them in details, but I'll actually be going through the more important ones um, in more details. But anyway, before we go to the earnings, let's cover some news today. So let's go over to Wall Street Journals. All right, so over here you can see Amazon profits show resilience even as labor supply crunch weigh on results. So uh, Amazon... Um, went actually even higher. They were actually down this much by 7.81%. Uh, this was actually due to the whole entire Facebook, uh, which is Meta Platform. After Meta Platform's uh, miss on earnings, miss on revenue, miss on guidance, uh, basically this created this sort of tech crash in the entire market. Uh, Nasdaq was down by 3% uh, yesterday, which was quite insane. Uh, for us to see such a huge dip in the Nasdaq, a huge dip in uh, the S&P as well. Uh, it was all because of Facebook alone, which is kind of crazy because um, one of the FANG um, can easily just crush, uh, crush the entire market. And it's the same thing because one, one of the FANGs can also easily make the market, such as Apple making the market, how Netflix destroyed the market. These are all the FANGs, okay? Google tried to uh, help the market up, but they didn't really do that well. Because Amazon, Amazon did their earnings today, uh, yesterday, and well, it was bad. So it was horrible, but Amazon is still up. Okay, so let's bring you guys to attention to this. Uh, I'm gonna bring up this, which is Amazon's earnings. Okay, so for people who do not know, um, as of now, right now, uh, Amazon, we are expecting an EPS of Amazon for three dollar and eighty eight cents. Okay, a three dollar and eighty eight cents EPS. Um, so that that's that's basically the only thing that you need to know of uh, about Amazon uh, in terms of expectation. Operating cash flow decreased, free cash flow decreased, uh, free cash flow less principal repayment decreased, free cash flow decreased. Common shares went up, which means it's a bad thing because you have more shares now. Okay, which means more uh, shares dilution. Net sales went up by only 9% in the fourth quarter as compared to the fourth quarter in 2020, which means you are only having a 9% increase year over year. That's how crazy it is, okay? Such a big company, we're expecting 12%, 15%, even 20% year over year. And they're only doing 9% from the fourth quarter of 2020 to fourth quarter of 2021. And let's not, let's not forget because 2020, uh, fourth quarter uh, to... 2021, we should have a huge increase because that's where uh, we actually get a big part of where the recovery actually comes in. And net sales only increased by 9%. So that's why it's very, very dangerous for us to see these kind of numbers on Amazon. Operating income decrease, which is a good thing. We want operating income to, uh, to kind of decrease a little bit. Net income increased 14.3 billion. All right, so this is where it's crazy. Per diluted share at $27.75 EPS, we have an expectation of $3.88. This is almost nine times, eight to nine times more than what we expected, which is why Amazon basically just shot up. Uh, Amazon is currently in the pre-market, it's up 13%. Yesterday, after hours, it was up 17%. That's how crazy it is for Amazon to really see this kind of market uh, where we actually saw a huge jump in the EPS. The EPS alone was good enough for them to be like, all right, you know what? We can struggle this entire thing. No worries. Like, you know, you got bad cash flow, you got bad revenue, you got bad sales, you got bad guidance. No problem. Good EPS. But the thing is that because you're not going on a $5 EPS or a $7 EPS or a $10 EPS, you're doing $27.75 on EPS. So naturally, the entire market is just be like, whoa, 
this is a super duper high EPS. I think Amazon is a good company for us to continue investing in the near future. But something that's super duper important is something that's written here. Fourth quarter 2021 net income includes a pre-tax valuation gain of $11.8 billion dollars included in a non-operating income from our common stock investment in Rivian Automotive, which completed an IPO in November. Dude, if you're actually including that in as your non-operating income, you know, if we actually take that out right now, like right now you just take that out, the EPS we're looking at maybe at $4, $4.50 maybe, it is not $27, man. It's not $27. So, I don't know. I, I feel that this is very, very big. Uh, I think that Amazon probably thought that they wanted to ensure that the market is not spooked. Okay? Amazon was worried that maybe the investors were spooked that uh, everyone was basically getting out of Amazon. You know, Amazon might not be so good. Amazon got bad uh, net income, got bad revenue got bad uh, sales, got bad guidance. Everything was bad for Amazon. And the only way for Amazon to actually come up uh, better was for this to happen. So now, my thinking is one of two things. Uh, Jeff Bezos may come up and say that he will be starting to sell Amazon stocks. Uh, because right now, he's not the CEO anymore. But the thing is that he do have a lot of stocks in Amazon. Uh, and I think that there is a possibility that he might actually come out and say, uh, you know what, I am going to sell maybe 50% of my Amazon stocks in this quarter. And because of that, uh, we might actually see Amazon drop in price drastically because this might be the price correction that they needed. And the next quarter, where we have the so-called bad guidance, we're not going to see a $27 diluted per share anymore. We're not seeing $27 EPS again, okay? And at that point of time, uh, you also have to take, a, take into consideration that Rivian is now at $60. So you have to Minus out what like 40, 48 percent, 40, 48 percent of uh, the uh, non operating income as well. So, yeah, I, I personally, Amazon is, Amazon is not going to do good in the next quarter, and that's that's my personal concern right now. And that's why I mean, I would, I would personally be like uh, scooch away from Amazon for now. I don't, I don't really see some uh, something that's really good about Amazon. Uh, I've been reading this report um, over here. Okay, you can see over here for the entire report. Um, see, da, da, da. let's see. Okay, the shopping wise, they got the biggest Black Friday, the Cyber Monday. The shopping wise was actually all right. What what was actually very very interesting to me was the AWS. Uh, yeah, so AWS actually got very uh, was very very well done because Nasdaq, Meta. Qualtrics, uh, Stellantis, Rivian, Aurora, Best Buy, Under Armour, Adidas, Richmond, Goldman Sachs, AIG, Fannie Mae, uh, Pfizer, uh, Gillette, Bayer Corp, Simons, Con, Discovery, United Airlines, all of them are using AWS, which is great and all. But let's not forget that um, I think it was about two months ago when AWS actually got an attack where they got hacked. And that basically just shut down the entire internet. Because uh, AWS holds so much um, groundwork um, in the cloud computing side of things, um, especially as an SAA, uh, SAAS. So it's good and all. I really like this uh, sort of growth uh, for Amazon. I, I'm very, very happy to see Amazon grow at this extent, which is why um, it, it kind of saddened me to see that they are trying to pull this uh, $27 EPS um, crap with uh, the Rivian, uh, Rivian uh, non-operating income. I thought that that was very, very bad. I think that that's kind of like misguiding uh, the investors a little bit. People who are not reading into the earnings report, they probably saw, whoa, Amazon is up by 17%. Best time for us to buy now. So yeah, that's kind of my issue. That's the first scenario where I was talking about how Jeff Bezos might probably sell. The second scenario, on the other hand, which which would be what I was actually talking in my prediction for 2022, which would be Amazon coming out to say, all right, you know what, we're going to be doing a stock split. Because right now, if they do not do a stock split, uh, when quarter one reports come in and they kind of just tumble all the way down, even a stock split will not be able to save them. And that's kind of why I think a stock split needs to happen in the next two months. 
um, or at least the announcement had to come out in the uh, next two months for them to really save uh, the next quarter because the guidance is going to be horrible. They're going to miss on the guidance. They're going to miss on the revenue. They're going to do all these misses again. But on top of that, they're not going to have this kind of EPS for quarter one of 2022. And that's kind of my worry for um, Amazon as of now. But yeah, anyway, that's Amazon. Uh, let me look at... Okay. Uh, that's Amazon done. Okay. Facebook fails a $10 billion thing from Apple privacy push. So for people who don't know what happened was uh, last year when Apple actually changed the privacy law, uh, most of the social media platform actually got destroyed. So such as your Facebook, your Pinterest, your Twitter, your Snapchat, uh, all of them basically uh, who are mostly on the Apple ecosystem where they actually uh, earn money via pushing ads to uh, their consumers uh, all got destroyed because Apple basically said, all right, uh, we are going to be turning off personalized ads. So all these uh, social media platforms, they basically earn money from all these personalized ads. And with that simple change, all of them basically just went down. Uh, you saw Snapchat go from $60 all the way to $30 or so. Uh, you saw uh, Twitter drop to the $40 level. You saw Pinterest drop to the $40 level. You saw, um, yeah, uh, you saw Facebook drop to the $280 level. Uh, it was crazy. Uh, for all of them to basically just drop from the Apple privacy push. So that's kind of the context for this. Uh, but yeah, discussing the Meta Platform's quarterly earnings and its outlook for this current year that shocked investor, the CFO uh, said that the company expect Apple policy to cost it more than $10 billion in loss of sale for 2022, uh, which is equivalent to 8% of its total revenue last year. Uh, and yeah, I mean, that's kind of how strong um, Apple is. Uh, people tend to forget that, you know, Apple might be this um, iPhone maker and that's about it. Uh, but they forget to take into account that there's so many consumers who are using iPhones, iPads, MacBooks, uh, whatever inside the anti uh, Apple ecosystem. You have to remember that all these people who are using the Apple ecosystem, they have to follow the rules of Apple. And if Apple decides to turn off personalized ads like what they did uh, back in late 2021, um, all these other companies get destroyed. Um, so, yeah, you know, uh, it's kind of scary to see that Apple has this much power. But I actually said it uh, over and over again, you know, Apple is really just that strong. Apple has that much power in their hands. And I truly believe it uh, because uh, I am someone who uses Apple. Okay. I have the Apple. I got the iPad. You know, uh, I, I got a MacBook. I'm not going to take it out right now. But, you know, I, I have multiple iPhones actually. So that, that's crazy. You know, I understand that the Apple ecosystem is just this big. And because that, uh, Facebook uh, can easily get destroyed by that. And on top of that, on top of losing the $10 billion or uh, expected to lose $10 billion from the, um, from the Apple policy, they also got bad earnings. They got bad guidance. And let's not forget, they are spending way too much money on the metaverse. And, you know, I'm not going to go through this entire thing because I just spoke about all this yesterday. So if you're interested, just go to the news that I had for yesterday and you can see me rant about all those afterwards. But anyway, after that, a uh, U.S. says Russia is planning to fabricate a pretext to invade the Ukraine. Uh, so apparently they declassified the intelligence. Uh, their official said that uh, Russia is planning to fabricate a pretext to uh, for an invasion for Ukraine, expanding on intelligence that the administration released earlier that showed that kinds of plot, uh, plot, uh, plot in Moscow uh, could use to justify an incursion. Uh, so basically, they just think that uh, Russia probably want to just create this sort of um, reason why they uh, are these rights where they can in, uh, invade Ukraine. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm not sure how true this is, uh, but same thing. Uh, I'm just going to be reading this. I'm not going to be putting much opinion onto this because this is very, very politically uh, driven and I don't think I uh, want to want to be on that side of things. Uh, yeah, the attack would include Moscow's use of propaganda video that could depict graphic scenes. Um, include Turkish-made uh, Berakata drones used by Ukraine, which has angered the Moscow US officials said. Video will be released to underscore a threat to Russia's security to underpin uh, military operations. Uh, could provide the spark that Russian President Vladimir Putin needs to justify an invasion um, of Ukraine. Uh, so yeah, let's 
that's all I have for you guys. Okay. But now let's go to something that I'm really, really happy about. Okay, this news made me smile all the way till morning because I bought the dip on Snapchat and I saw that Snapchat went up. Snapchat went 62% um, in the after hours. I'm super duper happy because uh, when I saw Snapchat uh, went down to about $24.80, I bought in another 200 shares. Uh, so... Uh, before I even buy in the 200 shares, Snapchat was actually one of my highest uh, position. It was my second highest position. And after I buy the 200 shares, it became my uh, uh, highest position in my entire portfolio. So I'm very, very happy because of that Snapchat kind of just destroyed, just blew it out of the park. Uh, I'm a little bit upset, but, you know, honestly, I shouldn't be. Uh, I'm a little bit upset I did not buy call options on uh Snapchat instead, uh, but the thing is that instead I bought, uh, I sold put option on the Snapchat because to my to my knowledge, I'm thinking I wouldn't mind buying more Snapchat if it actually comes down to it. Uh, but because of that, uh, yeah, it was basically a win throughout on all matrix actually. Um, I would be earning about you know maybe six thousand dollars or so. Uh, but yeah, Snapchat, uh, very very happy with it. But over here, let's look at it. Snapchat posts the first profits and it adjusts to Apple privacy push. Okay. Snapchat went down 23%, FYI, which is why I, I bought the dip on this. When uh, Facebook basically uh, single-handedly destroyed Snapchat uh, after its earnings yesterday, Snapchat just went down because people think if Facebook is going down, chances are Snapchat is going down because of the privacy push by Apple. But when Snapchat actually posts the um, earnings about uh, what they have been doing, uh, EPS was a bit, uh, they hit 22 cents on EPS when we were expected to only hit 10 cents. So that's about almost uh, more than two uh, more than two times of what they are expected to be doing for their EPS. They got beat on their DAUs, which is their daily active users, which is very, very important for me. And then finally, they got a very, very good guidance, which is also beat on guidance. So basically, it's a triple beat for um, Snapchat. And I think because of that, Snapchat basically just went up. And because Snapchat have this triple beat, it's not only just the triple beat on its own. It's also adding on to the fact that Metaverse, uh, well, Meta platforms couldn't do it. Facebook couldn't do it as Snapchat could because of that sheer possibility of people thinking like, what? Like, how can... Facebook not do it and Snapchat do it. This, just this small tweak in your uh, mentality alone, strike Snapchat as one of the best stock to get into in terms of your social media kind of things. Of course, when Twitter come out, I'm pretty sure uh, Twitter would be doing quite well as well. So we'll never know. Uh, we'll, we'll see when Twitter actually comes up. But yeah, Snapchat suddenly just shot up all the way. Um, let me see if I have, have, have. Uh, let's see. Okay, Amazon, I can close it up. Okay, Snapchat over here. Revenue increased by 64% in 2021. Okay, net loss improved 48%. And we have um, a first full year of positive operating cash flow. This is crazy, okay. FCF um, of 293 million. And, uh, no, uh, FCF of 223 million. The cash, the, uh, okay, because... You have to understand that uh, Snapchat has kind of always been losing money, basically. And this is the first year that actually um, Snapchat is earning money, which is why for the guidance of it, they were actually uh, guiding of a $0.10 per, uh, for EPS. And they actually hit doing $0.02. Cents. So this huge bid basically just makes uh, Snapchat like... Um, like, it, it, it was a crazy beat in general, okay? Yeah. So, uh, revenue increased 42% to uh, $1.3 billion. Uh, first quarter of positive net income as a public company of $23 million. Uh, adjusted EBITDA improved 97% year over year. This is what I'm talking about growth, okay? Not, not your freaking 9% or your 6% BS on Amazon, okay? This is what we're talking about growth. Operating cash flow up as well. Uh, free cash flow up as well. So basically, everything's up. Okay. Now, this is where, where, where it's interesting. Okay. DAUs were 319 million, uh, which is an increase of 50, 54 million. Um, well, which is a 20% year over year. Pretty good. This is what I'm talking about. 
Same with the Amazon net sales of 9%. DAU is basically uh, net, the, the net worth for Snapchat or any social media company, okay? Up by 20%. That's what I'm looking for, okay? Year-over-year -year growth in DAU has been 20% or more for five consecutive quarters, which is why I'm very, very happy to see. I want to see higher DAUs. I want to see higher MAUs. This is where social media kind of go off. We want to see higher DAUs and higher MAUs most of the time okay uh on eight our 18 new year eve uh lenses generated more than 7 billion impressions so uh they are doing a lot of rnds on the augmented reality side of things um so but i'm not very very certain on the augmented reality side of things so i wouldn't uh, want to comment much on those uh but i want to look at guidance okay the guidance is okay financial guidance okay da, 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 let's see okay over here Revenue is estimated to be between 1.03 billion and 1.08 billion, okay? This was the guidance that was uh, given by Snapchat. Our, our expected guidance was 1.01 billion to 1.04 billion. And this is, the, uh, this is what I mean by a guidance B. What Netflix came up with was they were guiding for 23% and then they gave like 8%. This, this is the issue here. When you actually have a higher guidance, basically beating on guidance. Right now, okay, in quarter four, like I said before, on a lot of news coverage already. Guidance, um, guidance, beating the estimate on guidance is the, the most important thing right now. Okay, Beat, beating on all your uh, revenue, beating on income doesn't even matter. Unless you are Amazon beating on EPS by eight times, that's a different story. But beating guidance, that's one of the most important things right now. Uh, but yeah, over here, then you can see adjusted EBITDA is estimated to be approximately break even, which is very good because we were expecting us to actually lose uh, lose on the, uh, the adjusted EBITDA for the next quarter as well. So yeah, overall, guidance B, everything B. And because of that, Snapchat went up. And I'm very, very happy with that. Uh, so yeah, basically all these uh, things that I already talked about. Anyway, okay, now let's talk about Ford. Ford closed a $17.9 billion in net, net income, reversing year earlier loss. Okay, Ford Motors. Let's look at the earnings for Ford Motors. Uh, yeah. Ford Motors over here. Let's look at Ford Motors. Okay, um, for Ford Motors, let's look at what was their um, EPS. Uh, we were expecting an EPS of 43 cents for a uh, Ford, okay? We're expecting 43 cents. Okay, let's look at this. Uh, fourth quarter, $37.7 billion net income of 13.3, adjusted e uh, EBIT for uh, 2 billion, uh, full year net income 17.9, uh, 10 million for midpoint, uh, da, da, da. reclassifying quarter one Rivian gain. Okay, so I will be creating a video uh, tomorrow um, for Ford uh, especially. Uh, this will be a more information-driven video for Ford uh, for tomorrow. I actually will be talking more about Ford, why I think Ford is not that good of a company and why I am constantly shorting Ford and why I'm actually making money from shorting Ford, which is quite crazy, right? right? Like uh, Ford is down 4.6% um, in the pre-market. So I'm very, very happy about uh, my puts on, short, uh, on Ford. Uh, financial performance is obviously critical. Uh, we are also uh, proud that customers see how Ford is taking EV mainstream and have already ordered or reserved more than uh, 275,000 all-electric um, SUVs, F-150, uh, E-Transit commercial vehicles, breaking constraints to deliver every one of them as fast as we can. Not important. Uh, let's go. 5.4% uh, uh, market share, wholesale 1.1. Uh, this one is... Non-GAP. Okay, let's look at their non-GAPs. Uh, no, actually, I want to look at their GAP. Uh, for their GAP, they are doing... Da, 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 da. EPS, $3. 12.3. Um, What's their diluted? 26 cents. Okay, yeah, this is the, this is the reason why. They adjusted the EPS for diluted is 26 cents. We were expecting... 43 cents and yeah that's a huge miss on eps uh let's look at this uh fourth quarter okay we already know this we already know this 
notice. Okay, LG. Da, da, da. Yeah, I mean, uh, Ford ended the quarter with thirty-six billion dollars in cash and fifty-two billion in liquidity. Both measures included a company's investment in Rivian, which was valued at ten point six billion dollars. And FYI, I'm just going to give you guys a little bit of a teaser. Um, they are. Uh, this is going to be expiring soon, where they can actually buy out on the 9th of May of 2022. So, Regan is going to drop in price as well. Uh, high chance. Uh, which is why I'm going to be doing some puts on Regan as well. So, I'll see how it goes. Um, business highlights, North America. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, I mean, okay, you know what? Let's just look at guidance because uh, we don't really care about what, what, what have they been doing over there anyway. So... Okay, the guidance should be here. Uh, the guidance, guidance, give me the guidance. Give me the guidance. I'm almost certain that the guidance was below. So, pretext, special motors. Okay, so apparently they did not give guidance. Um, I'll probably go through the guidance again myself um, after this. Uh, after dinner, actually, I need to go for a dinner with my parents after this. Uh, but yeah, okay, let's go back to this. Uh, yeah, but expect pre tax profit minus one time items to rise 15 to 25 percent this year over last year. Uh, expect its vehicle delivery. Oh, okay, so the guidance did come. Uh, the, del the delivery to rise 10 to 15 percent globally this year. So, uh, we are expecting Ford to have uh, more deliveries, which is good, which is all right, which is not that bad. But I just feel that um, on the other hand of how Ford is as a company as a whole, I think that they are not really um, really doing as much EVs uh, as compared to the other companies, uh, which is why I also think GM is going to suck as well. But we'll, we'll see how that goes as well. Okay, still the tight supplies on dealership lots uh, related. Hmm. The firm expect a global production to increase about 9% from last year to 76.4 million vehicles. Uh, all right, so the things that you, we also have to take into consideration for the uh, CPI data um, for on the 10th, because if we actually see uh, new car prices, new trucks prices actually going down, um, I think that this would also show a possible shift for uh, GM and Ford to actually go towards the downside. If we do see higher prices for the used cars, uh, new cars, uh, used trucks, new trucks, all this, if we do an see an increase, which means that the demand for all these automobiles is still very, very high in the following CPI to come, uh, then yeah, maybe, maybe there is a good chance that GM and Ford uh, might actually be doing um, substantially well uh, in the next few quarters to come. Uh, uh, yeah, so General Motors say it expect the company's factory activity to rebound sharply this year. Yeah, so this is what I'm actually talking about. So uh, if they are actually expecting uh, more deliveries and more production uh, to come this year, uh, we can actually see how that actually reflects on the CPI itself. And of course, um, the other spectrum of things might actually happen, which is um, GM and also Ford. Mass produce all these uh, EVs, all these F-150s, all these Chevrolet, uh, the Chevrolet boats, whatever it is, they keep on creating, mass producing all these vehicles and the demand just dies out for it. No one wants it. Okay, and that can somehow create this level of deflation um, afterwards. And then in the following CPI, you can kind of see prices of it keep on going down because if they have a huge supply of it with the demand being so low, eventually they, they'll have to be like, all right, you know what? We're saying it, like, let's say $45,000 for uh, this vehicle. After like two quarters, all right, you know what? We, we'll do it at 38, okay? Okay, you know what? We'll do it at 32. And then uh, slowly and slowly and slowly, you start to see prices going down and down and down. That's how the whole this inflation moves to deflation. And yeah, that's kind of what, what I'm expecting at, of, uh, at the very least. Uh, yeah, okay. I, I think I will actually talk more about this um, on, in tomorrow's video anyway. So USC, uh, Iran's nuclear program is too advanced to resolve key goal of 2015 pact. Uh, same thing. I think this is just... Uh, Politically driven, to say the least. Uh, so yeah, Amazon share jump as cloud unit helps drive profit past estimates. Uh, I think I've basically already explained this entire thing about um, Amazon, so I'm not gonna cover it on uh, Bloomberg again. 
Uh, okay, Zuckerberg tells staff to focus on video products as Meta stock plunges. Uh, yeah, okay. Honestly, I think this is the same thing as I always talk about how uh, companies... Uh, where they actually give a stock-based compensation to their employees, where people actually join the company, they work uh, for a salary. Um, usually, these public companies will say, okay, you know what, uh, we'll be giving you a stock-based compensa uh, compensation in order for you to work harder, you know, because the more you work, the better quality work that is out there, um, the better the stock will actually uh, perform in the long run. And because that kind of serves as this form of motivation for you to do well for the company and such. And because of that, um, I think it's very hard for uh, Meta Platform's uh, employees to feel so good about themselves because chances are all of them, well, I'm pretty sure all of them have um, a public stake in the company. And some of them might probably even buy more shares in the company themselves uh, in private. And because of that, then having the, the chance to do so, having to buy, uh, buy into the shares of the company, Saying Meta platform dropped by 23% will not feel good. And yeah, I, I mean, like, it's, it's going to be hard for an employee to suddenly see, like, oh, you know, like, for what, what I have done, basically, I just lost, like, what, 20, 23% loss in a day. That's basically a penny stock loss in a day. So, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be hard for the employees themselves. Uh, but yeah, you know. Quick that he, if he, he started to cry, it wasn't because of the day's news. Uh, his great theory, I was the result of a scratch cornea. <laughs> okay, what a robot. Come on. Uh, I think they lighten the mood as, as uh, the stock price lost more than a quarter of its uh, value. Uh, Zuckerberg explained that the historic stock drop was a result of Meta's weak forecast for revenue in the current quarter, according to the he would, uh, according to the person who attended and was not authorized to speak about it, it's important to focus on growing Facebook short video uh, product. So like I said, bad forecast. Literally, buzzword for quarter four, forecast. You just need to look at forecast. Revenue, not so important. Forecast, 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 forecast. <sighs> but yeah, uh, Zuckerberg echoed his remark of a day earlier to investor telling employees that the social networking giant faced an earlier unprecedented level of competition with the rise of TikTok, which is true. Uh, I've actually been talking about this uh, as well. I think TikTok is definitely a very, very strong platform um, to fight with meta platforms in general because um, right now, if we are talking about short uh, videos, you have three places with short videos, be it your Instagram uh, Reels, uh, you have your YouTube Shorts and TikTok. And I think it's quite safe to say that TikTok is currently dominating um, the, the three, the, out of the, the three of them. And the next would most likely be YouTube Shorts. And I think Instagram Reels is trying their best to uh, get behind it. Uh, yeah, okay, over here as well. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even see it. Okay, Meta's uh, Instagram app has an, a, co a copycat of TikTok called Reels, which the company is not prioritizing. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that they, they are going to be doing the same thing as what TikTok actually did at the start, which is... Um, paying a lot of creators like a hundred dollars two hundred dollars to create real content every single day that's how you actually create uh mass create content at the start to kind of create this buzz around it and for people to keep continue swiping it uh on and on and on uh i'm pretty sure that youtube shots they were actually doing it at the start as well so yeah uh, employees will glue to the stock price Facebook lost a record of $251 billion of value in a single day. Some were discussing buying shares during the day, believing in Zuckerberg's long-term vision for the metaverse and immersive version of the internet. Others fret about what a continued decline might mean for their net worth. According to people familiar with the matter, um, Zuckerberg's own wealth dropped by $31 billion. Same thing. I always like to say this. Uh, I don't think that um, the amount of shares that um, all these CEO have are very, very liquid to begin with. So I wouldn't really like to say that their wealth basically dropped $31 billion because it didn't. It was just that the company stock's price dropped. It's not as if that uh, Zuckerberg is just going to be like, you know what? Because it dropped, I'm going to sell all my stocks. I'm going to sell every single share. So I'm not going to be the CEO anymore. It's not going to happen, okay? So that's why. I, I think that's kind of just baloney. I don't really care about that. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's basically it for that. Uh, US car prices has passed its peak. Okay, so this is, oh my God, yeah, this is, this is what I'm talking about Ford. This is what I'm talking about Ford right now, okay? Uh, for Ford and GM, we want to see US car prices passing their peak. 
So if they already passed the peak, we are only looking at a step down uh, as it goes, uh, possibly in disinflation and also deflation, like I said before. Uh, but yeah, you know, I, I'm going to save this because uh, I'll be talking about this um, on Saturday, like I said. Uh, all right, Baron, Snapchat, yeah, okay. Uh, doesn't have all Facebook problems, like I said before. Uh, I think I really covered this properly um, earlier. Okay, so now let's go for a quick fire for earnings before I end this. Right now it's already 35 minutes, so I'll, I'm just going to do some quick fire rounds for the earnings side of things. Activision, basically a miss, uh, because uh, let's look at their game side of things. Call of Duty, a uh, decline year over year. Um, with their development on their uh, Warzone experience was also not very good, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I'm pretty sure Warcraft wasn't doing the, uh, the best either. It was only doing, uh, especially in 2020, they were doing really, really good. So right now, it's kind of being overshadowed by what they actually did in 2020. And I think that's kind of that's kind of the, the sad thing about how uh, these kind of things actually work out. Uh, I'm pretty sure that their guidance wasn't uh, exactly fantastic. So I would assume that uh, Activision will be going down today. Uh, let's see. I'm pretty sure I have Activision up in here. So Activision, uh, ATVI. Yeah, okay. They're, they're kind of up by 0.4% right now. Uh, but uh, usually Activision move when the market actually opens. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Like, look at this. This is pretty bad for net revenue to only be earning 600, uh, $645 million in um, the last quarter. Uh, pretty bad for um, Activision, I would assume. But then again, uh, don't mistake this as uh, bad news because personally, I'm not someone who has been looking at Activision news for quite some time. And the only reason why I'm looking at Activision now is also because of the uh, Microsoft interest in uh, acquiring the entire company. So. Yeah. Okay, Pinterest. Uh, Pinterest was actually a, a, an interesting one for me because I wasn't expecting Pinterest to earn so much money. Pinterest earns $846 million. Bruh, that's more than Activision. How is Pinterest earning more money than Activision? That's... But yeah, okay, quarter four group 20% year over year. Pretty good. Like I said, pretty good. Okay, I wasn't expecting Pinterest to do this well, okay? However, the MAUs did decrease 6% year over year. Uh, and that's kind of a little bit concerning, okay? It's just a little bit concerning, uh, but I don't think the market is that concerned to, to that extent because, um, well, Pinterest is up 15%, but let's not forget that because Pinterest did drop 10% um, after the whole uh, Facebook situation. Uh, so it... 15% increase does not really help the case. If anything, it's actually lower than before. So they were just kind of like rallying up to, well, delete the losses that uh, it actually had on uh, the Facebook news. So yeah, uh, Pinterest, but honestly speaking, I think Pinterest uh, guidance uh, wasn't really the best. Uh, so yeah, over here, um, okay, Q1, we'll grow in the high teens uh, percentage uh, year over year. We expect our uh, non-gap um, expenses to grow. 10% uh, quarter over quarter in quarter one. We expect non-gap operating expenses to grow as well, which is bad. Um, US MAUs are approximately 86 million and the global is 436.8. Uh, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that they're not giving any sort of um, guidance here other than that. they're only giving guidance on the expenses. They're not really giving us guidance on the MAUs uh, and DAUs. So because of that, uh, I, I think this is a very mixed, uh, it's, it's just basically very mixed, uh, in my opinion. Uh, okay, let's look at Unity, because Unity, Unity, Unity. Okay, actually Unity was like a little bug, I couldn't find it, but anyway, Build.com. Uh, I, look, I looked at Build.com, Build.com was a crazy, like crazy. Uh, yeah, look, 197% year over year, dude. Oh my gosh. 85% year over year on the core revenue, 313% year over year on transactional fees. Uh, but yeah, uh, personally, I don't uh, invest in Bill.com, so it doesn't really matter to me. But Bill.com did when I... Uh, let, 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 let me look at Bill.com. Bill.com should be... Yeah, Bill.com up 26% uh, in the pre-market. Pretty crazy. So yeah. Uh, GoPro, GoPro basically just uh, missed on everything. It was horrible. 
Uh, I mean, okay, technically the revenue was up, but uh, I'm not a big fan of the revenue, like I said, but the guidance was down. So uh, GoPro, done. <laughs> Uh, SD Louder, okay, SD, SD Louder, honestly, uh, I like to look at SD Louder because uh, they actually hold a very important place in the supply chains for us because they actually deal with the makeup, the uh, skincare, the fragrance, um, and a lot of all these kind of things. And because of that, when we look at SD Louder, chances are you can really see how the supply chain countries are actually working um, in conjunction to how the economy is at the moment. So net sales increased 14% and diluted EPS rose. Uh, this kind of report is what I'm very, very excited about because this kind of means that, uh, you know, for the smaller items, um, the uh, shipping uh, side of things are actually a lot easier, uh, getting eased off a little bit better, such as how UPS is like, uh, because UPS is this uh, delivery service that um, basically just... Uh, does shipping and logistic throughout the entire world. And when you actually see better results on UPS, you just take it at face value and you understand that the whole economy is already doing better. Okay, you wouldn't think that the economy is doing worse when UPS is doing well. Uh, and it's not also because of a certain product or a certain services because UPS as a whole basically is like the middleman for every other services out there. Okay, if you're selling a hardware, you, you, you need UPS. If you're selling a software, chances are you will still use UPS to a certain extent. But yeah, that, that, that's, that's kind of how it works. Uh, so yeah, as, as still other technically work as that kind of um, that kind of company for me in conjunction for me to actually look at the guidance for things of that nature. Uh, so yeah, okay, I'll look. Okay, uh, full fiscal reflecting, blah, 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 blah. Okay, global volatility and ver uh, variability is expected to continue, including inflation, supply chain disruption, and COVID-19 restriction. The company believes that it could continue to manage through this uncertain environment while driving multiple engines of growth. A continued recovery of the makeup and hair care categories as country reduce COVID-19 restrictions, uh, which is good. Uh, this the second one is very good. Growth in developed market in the West and in the brick and mortar retail, which is kind of all right because we kind of want to see more brick and mortar sh shops, basically all the retail shops kind of uh, doing better uh, after this entire pandemic as well. Uh, targeted new distribution um, throughout the year to retailers that provide broader consumer reach. So yeah, more distribution chain. Uh, a continued gradual uh, resumption of international travel. Eh, not really big. Uh, bullish on that. Uh, benefit from a nearly full year in, uh, incremental impact of uh, in net sales and operating results, higher transportation and logistic costs are expected to negatively impact both cost of sales and operating expenses. Okay, now this is a little bit uh, eh, bearish to say the least. The company expects to mitigate some of the impact uh, to its business and cost through strategic price increases. Timing of shipments and uh, cost saving in the other areas, uh, in incremental uh, savings for from the post-COVID business acceleration program and a reinvestment in advertising, uh, advertising and capabilities. Full year effective tax rate of approximately twenty-two percent. Uh, okay, sales outlook um to increase ten to twelve percent. Eh, eh, not exactly what I'm really looking for, but. To be fair, it, it is as the louder to begin with. Uh, so uh, I think 10 to 12% is actually quite fair uh, because uh, as compared to Amazon, where you are actually more towards a tech company, uh, we would expect something that's a lot higher because your margin is a lot uh, higher as well. For as the louder, I'm pretty sure that our margin is a lot lower. So uh, 10 to 12% is uh, pretty fair. Uh, organic net sales increase 8 to 10%, okay. Earnings per share, okay. Projected to be between 1.51 to 1.63. Uh, let's see. As the louder, we were expecting the EPS to be about $2.63. They, uh, they reported $3.01. So uh, that was pretty good for this quarter. Uh, right now, we're expecting even, uh, okay, slightly lower, I guess, uh, for this. So, um, yeah, I guess I guess the guidance is all right. It's not, it's not bullish, nor is it bearish. Uh, but sales outlook. Okay, yeah, I think I think for Esther Louder, it, it's just not bullish, not bearish. I think it's just a very very normal report. Uh, and I'm almost certain that uh Esther Louder did not really flew up from this. Um, yeah, I think in the after hours they were up about like five percent odd. 
Uh, so yeah, that's, I think that's about it. Uh, okay, that's cool. Uh, I'll read up on that later on. Okay, but yeah, do I have anything else to talk about other than all this? Because this has been going on for way too long. It's 45 minutes already. Uh, but yeah, okay, anyway. So yeah, uh, I'm just going to do the wrap up for this entire video. So yeah, these are kind of news that I've been talking about. Okay, you know what? Uh, before anything, let's let's go through some of the traits. Just in case you guys are so interested in my traits, I'll just go, go through my traits for this week. Uh, it's not as much as you guys think because I did not trade as much. Okay, I bought Google. I bought um, calls um, in Boeing. Pretty bad. It, it basically just destroyed me. Uh, I bought puts on Apple. Uh, I bought shares in Snapchat. I sold puts on Snapchat. Uh, I bought calls on the firm, which is very good because a firm is going to go up on the news of Amazon going up, uh, which is why my firm, yeah, my firm is going to be going up. My a firm right now is up 5% in the pre-market. Uh, I'm almost certain that in the uh, after hours, it actually went up even higher. It was like about 9% or so. Uh, so yeah, I bought my calls on the firm. I bought more puts on Ford. And lastly, lastly, I sold a little bit more puts on the Peloton. Uh, but the only reason why I sold the puts on Peloton was because I bought puts on Peloton already. So I was kind of like uh, realizing some of the gains. Uh, but I can, I can let you know some of my plays that I will most likely be doing this week. Uh, you will most likely be buying puts on Rivian again. Uh, because I think Rivian is going to be very, very interesting for us to look at. Of course, same thing. No, not financial advice. Right now, Rivian is at sixty dollars, uh, sixty-two dollars or so. Uh, and I do think that Rivian might see a tough time in May. But you know, that's just my own thinking. It, it might, it might just suddenly spike up as well. Okay, not financial advice. By the way, uh, that's all I have for today. Uh, Forty-six minutes. Jeez. Uh, probably my longest video. By the way, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys um, on Monday. Well, tomorrow uh, for the fourth video and then afterwards on Monday.